uh, let's go to uh, Sunny LA, co-host of KNX in Death, KNX News Radio LA. How rude of me to mistake you. Really good to talk to you. I mean, we spoke last week, didn't we? We spoke about the assassination attempt of Donald Trump and, of course, the meteoric rise of Trump. And uh, uh, we, we've seen also uh, the, at the convention people pledging their support to Trump and him really having a heyday. Here we've got, I think we spoke also about Biden saying it was a matter of time until he stood down and now he's done it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has. And a uh, big surprise, uh, of course, uh, it had been anticipated. It was a question of just days. There's been a, a steady drumbeat, as you know, of leaks coming from the Biden White House, coming from various members of uh, Congress. And uh, it got to a point where I think it was obvious to just about anybody that uh, Joe Biden was going to have to make that decision to, to bow out of the race, which in fact is what he ended up doing uh, this afternoon, Washington time. He still says he's going to address the nation on television one of the days coming up in this week. I'm not quite sure what else he'll say, but probably more or less along the lines of what he said today in his statement. Now, I mean, I was just talking about this with Benedict. We, we knew this decision was coming pretty much, and you could see that he was losing support. We saw Clooney, for example, urging him to stand down. We saw Obama behind the scenes. It's interesting, actually, he hasn't endorsed uh, Kamala Harris. But on, on a human level, and we played the clip earlier of, of many of the gas for, from Biden, on a human level, it's really sad to see. Well, sure. I mean, look, this is a guy, Joe Biden, who has spent more than half a century in public service. Somebody who had wanted to be president for many, many years. He was passed over uh, when Barack Obama decided to uh, endorse not Joe Biden, his then vice president, but Hillary Clinton. We all remember her. Uh, and that didn't work out so well for the Democrats because she lost to Donald Trump. So yes, Joe Biden, uh, all of the reporting thus far out of uh, Washington and Delaware, where he has been recuperating from, from COVID, uh, strongly indicates that he's angry. He's angry at many of the uh, people in the Democratic Party that he feels he helped in that very long career that I just mentioned, uh, that he helped propel into prominence. Now he feels, apparently, that they've turned their back on him, uh, but it became untenable. It became uh, impossible, really, for him to continue his quest for a second term in the White House. And so, uh, yeah, he, he called it quits and then fairly quickly issued a uh, an endorsement of Kamala Harris. Well, well, absolutely right. I mean, the extraordinary thing is he caught his own campaign staff uh, off guard as well because, of course, they've spent the last week insisting that Biden is going to continue to run. We had all these complaints about Biden. And, and they were still putting the campaign schedule together, weren't they, for Biden? But, of course, he. what we now understand is that over the weekend he then call, called a huddle of his small circle of aides. This is Steve Ricchetti, uh, Mike Donilon, people like Annie Tomasini, Anthony Bernal, and, uh, of course, his, his wife, Jill Biden, who was instrumental in this. And that's when the decision was made, I think. Yes, uh, but notice something. Notice one name that you didn't mention. And there's a reason you didn't mention it, because according to all the reporting, one person he didn't consult uh, in the early hours of, of Saturday and Sunday morning before he made that announcement was... Kamala Harris. He apparently only notified mm. her just minutes before he released that statement. And what does that say? Well, I mean, you know, uh, there have been these stories throughout the past few years uh, about tension between the president's staff and the vice president's staff. Not unusual, by the way, in American politics. Uh, vice presidents often are just sort of you know, basically placeholders waiting to take over if something happens to the to the president. So, uh, you know, he had felt, uh, according to various reports, that her campaign, if not her directly, may have been going a little bit too far in efforts to undermine him, may have gone a little bit too far in trying to gather support among the delegates to the uh, upcoming uh, Democratic convention in August. 
So uh, that may have been a little bit of payback on the part of the president to uh, let her know just right before he let that uh, statement rip. I mean, look, you're, you're in uh, California, uh, which is a democratic uh, state. What's the mood like over there? Well, you know, uh, yes, you're right. This is a very what we call blue state, uh, a democratic state. Uh, it is also a state, and this is what is going to be very interesting. This is a state that Kamala Harris, when she was running for the presidency uh, in the primaries here, she dropped out because it was felt she couldn't win mm. in California. Uh, now, that's a liability for a politician. If you can't win uh, on your home turf, that's a potential issue. Now, having said that, this, of course, was a few years ago. She has since been vice president of the United States. Uh, she has gained a considerable more experience and considerable, uh, considerable more uh, exposure so we don't know how she would fare if there was a primary today in California, but we don't have to uh, worry about that because she apparently will be the nominee and then it's up to uh, the general election. I mean, look, in all of the press, on this side of the pond, your side of the pond, there's been a lot of discussion about, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, about the signs that Biden was displaying, the use of words, using words like any way to buy himself time. He says, look, he also got aggressive with various reporters as well. And then, of course, the memory lapses and not quite knowing where he's going. Now, the New York Times has also run a series of reports saying that a Parkinson's expert visited the White House eight times in eight months. This is is a neurologist seen going in and out of the White House, Dr. Kevin Cannard, a neurologist specialising in movement disorders, and recently published a paper on Parkinson's. What's the mood like in the United States? Is there a lot of chatter about what exactly is wrong with Biden? Well, there's a lot of chatter about Joe Biden not clearly being the same Joe Biden of only a few years ago. Look, I, uh, I'm trying to think, it was about five years ago, I ended up hosting uh, then the former Vice President Joe Biden. It was right before he decided to run for president. I hosted a couple of public events when he was on a book tour, and I had the opportunity to spend a fair amount of time with him in the green room waiting to go on, and then uh, more time on a stage asking him questions. There's no doubt in my mind that the Joe Biden that I, I talked with at pretty great length not even five years ago, is not the same Joe Biden that I saw at the debate or the same Joe Biden that I've seen in two uh, American network television interviews in just the past uh, week and a half. So yeah, he's changed and he is older. And when people get older, uh, sometimes you know they slow down and they're mm. given to forgetfulness. Whether he has a clinical condition or not, is something that a lot of people uh, wonder about. And it's hard to pass that judgment if one is not a physician, and I'm certainly not. Mm. J just in terms of where we go from here, 107 days to go until the presidential election, I talked about money and, of course, the endorsement of Kamala Harris, but there are other people out there, aren't there? So you've got Kamala Harris, you've got people like Gavin Newsom, the California governor, sure. you've got Gretchen Whitmer, you've got Josh Shapiro, uh, and the other one, of course, and Barack Obama hasn't actually endorsed uh, Kamala Harris, is, of course, Michelle Obama. Yeah, I think, uh, and, and these are things, of course, that, that are being very uh, widely speculated about my best guess is none of that's going to happen that the uh, democrats are uh, so relieved or at least most of them are that joe biden is now not going to be taking part in the election that i think that they are going to be very quick and in fact they are they have been i, I should point out and i think you mentioned this in the uh, lead into this segment uh, there have been in just the past few hours a growing number of prominent Democrats, the so-called Democratic elite in the United States, who have now come out endorsing Kamala Harris, including, by the way, you mentioned California Governor uh, Gavin Newsom. He also issued a statement today endorsing Harris. So I think what is more than likely to happen is the convention will go ahead in August and uh, the delegates that 
were given to Joe Biden as a result of our primary system. They've now, in effect, been released by him since he's out of the race. And I think that they will fairly quickly uh, go ahead and, and endorse and vote for Harris as their candidate. I mean, you mentioned Gavin Newsom has endorsed uh, Kamala Harris, but also when you look at Gretchen Whitmer, of course, uh, sh uh, when asked if she would consider becoming a candidate if Biden was to step down, she said no. Then you've got Josh Shapiro as well, backing the vice president. So what about the loose cannon of Michelle Obama? Well, you know, Michelle Obama has been asked this a number of times over the past few years, and she a number of times has uh, indicated that she has absolutely uh, no taste for what would be involved in participating in a, a political campaign and if winning, running the, uh, the country as president of the United States. So I don't think that's in the cards either. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what is uh, really interesting, I think, now, and that is the number two spot. Uh, presuming mm. Harris does get the official nod from the Democratic Party, which I think she will, as the candidate, she still has to then select a running mate, someone to be the vice president, as she is now to Joe Biden. That, I think, is the area that is the most interesting and will be in the next few weeks. Who is that going to be? Will it be a prominent Democratic governor, someone from the U.S. Senate, from the House of Representatives, or, if not Michelle Obama, somebody who is not in government but somebody who has a name and somebody who can bring voters, especially younger voters, because that's a demographic that both parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, really are trying to get, you know, someone who can bring people to the voting booth. And finally, uh, is it possible for the Democrats to win? Sure. Uh, you know, the way it works is, uh, and, and when I say this, some people go, how can that be? But the truth is, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens in a lot of the states in terms of who people vote for because of our uh, electoral, uh, electoral college system, which is far too complicated to explain in a short <laughs> amount of time. Uh, because of the way the system works, really just a handful of states, about seven, maybe 12, depending on how you look at it, uh, will really determine this election and, and if certain key states pennsylvania for example wisconsin is another arizona uh could the democrats especially with joe biden off the ticket and kamala harris at presumably at the top of it and then again depending on whom she picks uh, to be her running mate could they win in enough of those states to get enough of the electoral votes to win sure Interesting stuff. Thanks ever so much, Charles. Charles Felburn there, co-host of KNX In-Depth, KNX News Radio in Los Angeles.